For those of you who are deciding to do, use Google Drawings for your assignment for your color scheme uh, document, what you're going to do is make sure that you make a copy of the document from Canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and click make a copy. And once you're done um, clicking that, I want you to go ahead and move this document into your assignment files folder for module 6. So I'm going to go to my drive. I'm going to look for my folder. I'm going to go to module 6 and I'm going to place it in my assignment files folder. And I'll go ahead and click move. Okay, so once you have that uh, save to your assignment files folder in your Google Drive of module 6. Uh, what we have here, you think it's just a blank page, but I actually have guidelines on here for you to help make sure all of your shapes and your text is all in um, a certain area of your document. So first you're going to go up to view and you're going to click view, you're going to go to guides, and I want you to show guides. So all of these guides here will help you uh, with the placement of your um, your text boxes, uh, images, and things like that. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna have you do is create a text box up here, so we can go ahead and give the uh, document a title, and we'll go ahead and define. Um, we'll define what color schemes are. So I'm going to go up here to where you have the T for text box. I'm going to go up to the left hand corner here. I'm going to click and drag a text box in this space here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click where it says align and I want to make it centered but um, going back to align I also want it centered in the text box. So I'm going to go ahead and title this color schemes. And uh, the way with that we're going to define mint, we're going to type an arrangement or combination of colors. And just make sure that your spelling is correct. Um, it's always nice to have the title larger and more bold than your definition. So this one, I'll go ahead and make it 18 and I'll go ahead and make it bold. And then later on, um, once I look at the overall uh, document, I'll see whether I want to uh, change the font uh, just to make it a little more interesting. For now, I'll just stick to Arial. Okay, so that's usually the default. So um, if you don't want to mess with the uh, t the font style, that's fine. You can keep it at whatever the default is. But main thing, whatever um, is most important, you always want that to stand out with bolder text. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, uh, we are going to insert uh, the color wheel that I had in Canvas. So I'm going to go to Insert, I'm going to go to Image, and I'm going to go to Drive. I'm just going to check my Recent to see and make sure that it's in my Recent files. Here we go. just want to make sure I have the correct one. This should be it. So I'm going to double click that. So this is going to be um, our key that we're going to use to help help you better understand how to work with color schemes. But obviously it's way too big so I'm going to shrink that down. Just click and drag one of the corners here. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this magnifier glass so I could zoom in right here. And I zoomed in a little too much. So let me go back to my magnifier glass. I'll click right here. Okay. So now I'm going to go back. So this here, your select tool, um, 
will allow you to select anything that you need to work on on your document. Um, so I want this to be a particular size. So what I'm going to do is go to Format Options and then Size and Rotation. Um, make sure to lock the Aspect Ratio. So what's going to happen, it's going to keep everything to scale. Okay, so right now I have it at 1.47. Let me move it to see because we want it in this corner here. I just want to make sure that there's enough space um, for the definitions and your boxes that you're going to create. So just to keep it at 1.5, I'm going to go ahead and line that up just like so. Okay. All right. So I can go ahead and close that for now. I'm going to um, have it fit on my page so I could see the whole thing. So what I'm going to do with this next, we are going to create six color schemes. So that's why we have these large spaces here. All I'm going to do is do control C, control V. So copy and paste. And I'm going to go ahead and place that. So notice I'm just doing a control V just to paste it again. I don't have to do control C again because I already um, copied it. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it in these different areas. Oops, did not want to do that. So be careful that you're not moving guidelines. So always pay attention to whatever you're clicking and dragging. All right, so once again, these color wheels are our key to understanding the different color schemes that I'm going to have you demonstrate on this page. So what we're going to do now is uh, define what each of these are here, and then we'll create uh, colors in the section so it'll make hopefully a little more sense how the color schemes work uh, in regards to the color wheel. All right, so going back to my text box, I'm going to click on that, come up here, click and drag a text box. So we'll have it sit right on top there check the spacing. I'll have it aligned to the top, which it already is. Now the font size looks like it's going to be a little too large, so I'm going to change the font size to a 12, and we'll see how that works out. If we need to shrink it down, we'll, we'll shrink it down. Uh, if you do control B, that makes your text bold. So this one is called complementary. So I'm going to do control B again to remove the bold setting. Uh, so this one, complementary colors, what that is, it's colors opposite each other. All right, so when we're looking at the color wheel here, we're looking at uh, colors that are directly opposite each other. So let me go ahead and zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so for example, um, the next thing I'll have you do is click on the line tool here. If yours does not look like that, just click the drop down and you can go ahead and click line. So I'm going to go ahead and create a line going from yellow to violet. Nope, that did not work. Let me try that again. Make sure I have my line tool selected. So I'm going to go from yellow to violet. All right, and I'm going to make the stroke a little bit thicker here. So I'm going to move that to three point. So then you can see it a little bit better. So you can choose whatever combination of colors that you would like. I'm, I'm just keeping it simple. If you want to copy exactly what I do, that's fine. As long as you understand the idea of how complementary colors work. So any combination of colors that are directly opposite each other, that makes complementary colors. All right. Uh, so in this section, what we're going to do next is we'll go ahead and create um, our squares to place the colors in. So 
I'm going to go ahead and click on the shape tool here and I'm going to choose the rectangle but to keep it a square I'm going to hold down on shift and click and drag now notice it did fill with color I don't want it to be that color so I'm going to go ahead where it says fill color I'll just keep it transparent for now uh, because we're going to use this um, throughout the um, the document that we're working on um, I do want this to be a particular size so I'm going to go back to format options and I want the width to be one inch and the height will be one inch also. All right, so I'll close that out. I'm going to click and drag this over to the corner just to keep things aligned. Um, I'm also going to copy and paste this. So control C to copy, control V to paste. I'm gonna go ahead and line that up together here like that. Okay, now to keep from um, any confusion on the document as far as all of these boxes goes, um, I'm going to have you copy and paste these boxes in the other areas just to make it easier to work with. So let me go ahead and click on fit so you can see the whole thing here. Now, if you click on shift and click the box again, the one next to it, it selects both of them. Another way to do that is if you click anywhere in the white space, you click and drag over both of them, that selects both of them as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a control C and a control V. I'm going to click and drag this over here. And then um, this color combination, we're actually going to have uh, three colors that we're going to demonstrate with. So I'm going to click one of the boxes, Control C, Control V, to make a copy of that and place it next to it. Now the other um, color schemes that we're going to end up uh, using three colors is going to be the one right below. So I'm going to go ahead and click up here in this white space and I'm going to drag over make sure I'm dragging over the three boxes it doesn't have to be completely covered when you drag over it I'm going to do control C control V I'm going to click and drag that put that in the bottom down here I'm going to do control V because I already have three in place here so I'm going to click and drag this and be careful when you're clicking in um, dragging because sometimes you may end up just clicking one of them but as long as they're grouped together like that you should be fine okay one last time control V and you're gonna place that one right over here on the bottom right area okay so this last one here um, once we get to this space um, I'll show you what we'll do for this one because we're gonna do four colors and um, a one by one uh, square doesn't fit four in there because of the definition. So we'll get to that uh, once we're at that point. Okay, uh, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to our first color scheme on complementary. So let me go ahead and zoom in on this area. Okay, so I'm gonna click my select tool here. And the first color that I wanna work with is yellow. Now, if you zoom in a lot, you should be able to see the hex codes. Uh, if it's hard to see, just make sure that you have your color wheel uh, page open with the hex codes on it so you can um, take a look at that. So our first one we're gonna do is yellow. Since I have this open already, it's four Fs and two zeros. So I'm gonna click on this space first. I'm gonna go to my bucket, which is the to fill the color. Now it looks like there's already a yellow there. So I'm gonna click it, but if I need to double check to make sure that's yellow, I can always go back here and double check. Um, it does have two Fs at the end of it, but it, it's still the same. So if you notice, still our yellow color. Uh, violets, so if you go back here, you can check it's 8080. 
So I'm going to go to my bucket. I'm going to go to custom. I'm going to type in 8080. Click OK. And now I have my violet. All right. So uh, for each areas that we work with, you're always going to uh, fill in the colors with the hex code. So that's the reason why we did that for our color wheel assignment. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take um, this text box here. But notice how I clicked on the line because um, I'm just going to copy and paste it. I'm going to do Control C, Control V. I'm going to take that drag it in here and the next um, color scheme that we're going to create for this section is called analogous so I'll double click this change that to analogous and then I'm going to change the definition so analogous colors this is three to five colors next to each other on the color wheel So what we're going to do now is choose three combinations of colors um, to put together on here in our space. So I'm going to work with a circle shape and I'm just going to create an oval. So we'll see if that is a good size. Notice there's a fill. There's always going to be that automatic fill color on there. So I'm going to change that to transparent. See this little uh, circle up here? This is to rotate your shape. So I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to click and drag. And I'm just showing that um, this is just to choose the three colors uh, for the combination that I'm going to place in here. So I chose blue, blue, violet, and violet. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on this first space here. And I'm going to work with blue. So blue is four zeros FF. And I'm going to go to my fill bucket here. Looks like there's already blue, but if you want to double check, um, you can always go to custom. And for theirs, they put more Fs, but you know, it's still going to be the same blue. Moving on to the next one, I have my blue violet. So let me just check the hex code blue violet. 8A2BE2. So I'm going to go to my fill bucket, go to custom, type in 8A2BE2, click OK. And then my last one is violet. So go back to my fill bucket and go back to custom, and that's 8080. Click OK. So I got my analogous colors. And then this gives you an idea of how they look like next to each other. So if you ever see swatches, if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, um, that's the reason for that, because you want to see why these colors look good together. And then you can see all those different combinations. All right, moving on along to the last one on this first column here. Uh, just like before, I'm going to click on this text box. I'm going to do a Control C, Control V. I'm going to click and drag it down here. I'm going to go ahead and change this one this time to try at it. And triadic. You might have an idea of what that means. So you're working with a triangular combination of colors. So two sides of the triangle must be the same. So for this one we can't have any irregular looking triangles. So two of them have to be the same. Two sides of the triangle have to be the same. Okay so what I'm going to do here um, instead of using the line tool, we're going to use the polyline. So what the poly polyline is going to do, it's going to connect 
a shape together. So this is triadic. We're basically creating a triangle inside of the color wheel to connect the colors together. So I'm going to start with yellow. I'm going to go to blue. I'm going to go to red. Just trying to line that up. And I'm going to go back to yellow. Okay, so this creates a uh, equilateral triangle. Uh, let me go ahead and remove that fill. And I'll make the stroke three points so you can see it better. Uh, I forgot to change the stroke on that one, so let me just backtrack really quick. Go back to this shape, change the stroke to three point. Or I should, yeah. Um, okay, so going back to our triadic, so notice I chose the primary colors for this one. Um, you can also rotate it, so let's see what happens when we rotate it. And I rotated the wrong one. Let's try that again. So I'm going to pick my rotation here. So I want it to be upside down and drag that down and take a look what happens. So this time uh, we have our secondary colors picked. So you got orange, green, and violet. And I'll go ahead and stick to those three. So since this is closer to this square, I'll just go ahead and choose that and I'll go clockwise. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna work with my green color. So my green is 00FF00. Go to my fill bucket, go to custom, type in 00FF00, click OK. Go to my next one, I'll put violet in there. Back to my fill bucket. Looks like I have violet here already, so I'll go ahead and click that. Click this one here, go to orange. So orange is FFA 500. So I'm going to go to my fill bucket. Go to custom, click FFA 500, click OK. So this shows me my triadic color scheme using uh, secondary colors as my triadic color scheme. All right, so moving on to the next, I'll go ahead and grab this text box, control C, control V. Drag that over here on this side. I'll move that over so you could see it better. Let me go back to my zoom so it's a little more centered. Whoa, too big. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so for this one here, instead of complementary, we're going to go ahead and Actually, I'll just write it directly in front, split complementary. So this one, it does take a visual to understand how that works out. So definition, a color, and the two colors adjacent to its complement. All right. So. Let me go ahead and explain that. Uh, I'm going to go back to my polyline tool here. So let's say, for example, that I chose the color red. So I'm going to click on red. Now, instead of going to green, I'm going to go to yellow green. So we're picking the two colors that are next to its opposite color. So I'm going to choose yellow green blue-green, and back to red. So what I want you to notice here, it does create another triangle. So it is a triadic uh, color scheme as well. But uh, this does have a specific definition to it, so that's why I have this one separate from triadic, just so you can see how that works out, because it specifically is to where uh, you create this kind of triangle because you're working I'm um, directly across, but the colors next to the complement. All right, so going back to my selection tool, I'm going to click on this first one here. I'll go ahead and fill that with red. So red being FF0000. Uh, Go to my fill buckets. Looks like there's a red here. 
I can always double check it to make sure that it's the same hex code. So pretty close. I'm noticing that it adds those extra Fs at the end, so it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Uh, next one, I'll go with yellow green. So yellow green being 9ACD32. So I'm going to go to my fill, custom, 9ACD32, click OK. And then going on to blue green, which is, I'm not going to be able to memorize that one, 0D98BA, 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 there we go, there we go, so got that in. All right, so moving on to this one that does not have any squares, so the first thing I'll have you do Copy your text box, control C, control V. Ah. Try to click and drag that down here. And move this up. Change this. So this one's called Tetratic. Tetratic. And the way that we define Tetratic. So you're basically creating a square or a rectangular combination of colors. So um, two sides are going to end up being equal. Kind of like how the um, triadic one works. There's always going to be two sides that have to be equal. All right, so going back to my my polyline tool. So I'll just show you quickly how it works. So for example, if I were going to make um, one that's a square combination, I can go um, from yellow orange to yellow green to to blue violet to red violet back to yellow orange. Okay, well, technically it was supposed to make a square, but that didn't turn out as well as I thought. Anyhow, if I had it evenly, it would have been a square. All right, so let me get rid of that one. Um, the one that I'm gonna put on the demonstration here, I'm gonna go from, oh, and you know another tool that you can use? You could try and use a, the rectangle tool. So let's say that I create a rectangle. There we go. Check that out. I'll remove my transparency. Do that with three points. So we're connecting orange, green, blue, and red. All right. So um, four colors that we need to put in here. What I'll go ahead and do, I'll copy one of these um, empty boxes. I'm, s I'm sure some of you have decided, gosh, I could just copy and paste one of the boxes that were already made. True, you could. Um, okay, so notice this one, uh, it doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to go to my format options and let me see if I shrink it down. Oh, I need to lock the aspect ratio. Became unlocked. Let me try, let's try 0.8. Let's see how that works out. So I'm gonna take this, put it here. Control C, Control V. Click and drag, put that right next to it. Select these two, Control C, Control V. Put that over. And looks looks like it fits nicely. Okay, so just looking at it, it looks like it's a little too far to the right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click and drag in this space here, and I'm going to go ahead and bring it over just a little bit so it's centered 
with the three that are up here and the three that are at the bottom here. All right, so colors. Let me work with this one. I'll work with orange. So orange being FFA 500. So color, looks like I already have orange there. This one's gonna be green. Let's see if it saved my green on here. No, it did not. But I'm sure this one is the same green. I could always double check. Um, this one, I'll make that my red. And the last one here, I'll make that my blue. And there we go. So this is a tetradic color scheme that we have here working with four colors. Okay, so our last one, I'm gonna go ahead and control C, control V to copy the text box and paste it, bring it down here. So this one is monochromatic, monochromatic. And definition is one color and the lightness and darkness of this color. Okay, so this one we're only going to work with one color, uh, but thinking of the different value of that color. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose violet for this one. If you wanna choose another co um, color, that's perfectly fine. So any of these, you can choose different color combinations as long as you follow the concept of how it works inside of your color wheel key. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick a shape actually. Let me pick a circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and circle violets. Make sure that my shape is transparent and the border weight is three. And I'm gonna go ahead and, oh. Always watch out what you're clicking and dragging because don't wanna drag the guidelines. Okay, so if you are ever using your arrow keys to move stuff and you wanna move it one pixel at a time, Hold down on shift and you can move your shapes one pixel at a time. Okay, so since I chose the color violet, I'm going to place the actual color that I chose right in the middle here. Because on the left, I'm gonna show a lighter version of that color and then on the right, I'm gonna show a darker version. So in here is going to be my violet. I'm gonna to go to my fill bucket. Looks like violet is here already. I'm gonna go here now. So this square is going to be my light violet. Go to my fill bucket, go back to, I'm actually gonna do custom. And um, so this is 8,080. But notice here, you can click and drag to make it a lighter value. So I'm going to make it a lighter value of violet. So I'm gonna do it right about there, just as long as it's lighter. So you can see a difference. And then here, I'm also gonna go back to my fill bucket, go back to my violet, Oop. but I wanna go to custom and I'll just drag down to where it becomes a darker value. I'm not gonna drag all the way down here cause it's just gonna be black. What we wanna see is just a darker violet. So now this is your monochromatic color scheme. Okay, so let me zoom out up here. And the last thing I'm gonna have you uh, place here is your name. Okay, so make sure that your name is on the document. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click my text box here. Put my name right in this area. It doesn't need to be super huge, so I'll probably make that a 10 font. Make it a different use caveats, type in my name, but I want it more to the right. So I'm gonna go to my alignments and I'm gonna align right so it stays to the right. All right. Um, 
these guidelines are not going to show when you uh, submit this assignment. So if it bothers you right now, you can always go back to the guides and um, remove the check mark where it says show guides. And this is what you're left with. So a um, few things that you can tweak if you decide you want to use a more interesting font for the different sections, you can do that. Uh, but otherwise, this is going to be the document that you submit in Canvas.